Hey, welcome everyone to episode 57 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's checking us out, liking, sharing, subscribing, things like that. It means the world to us. Thank you. So this week, we are going to have another return guest. I know it's been a lot of people coming back, um, but things have changed a lot, and I wanted to get a little more depth from Joe this time about the bar as opposed to just the Killer Queen scene. So we're bringing Joe back uh joe perugia who is from uh glitch bar arcade down in south florida and it's really hard for me to not bring up glitch bar pretty much in any conversation about indie games because they have all of the indie games they've been huge supporters of the scene and they've got a pretty big killer queen scene down there so um i guess we'll just bring joe in here and talk to him how you doing man good man how are you i'm good i'm good glad you got on here um and we can finally talk about everything that's going on with Glitch, because I know things have changed quite a bit since the last time I was down there um, for, was that Queen's Gone Wild 2020? Um, let's just start off with you. Um, who is Joe? What does Joe do at Glitch Bar? Why did you start working at Glitch Bar? Things like that. Uh, okay. Well, uh, my name's Joe Perugia. I am the general manager at Glitch Bar for Lauderdale. Excuse me, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I started there basically right when the bar opened uh, as a bartender and then became the general manager shortly after. Super fun place, super awesome place to work. <laughs> My cats are playing in the background distracting me. Um, I'm a huge video game player myself, I guess. Spent a lot of my off time playing. Um, I'm a big player of Killer Queen. Currently run run all the leagues here, uh, form my own team, everything like that. Um, I'm a big player of League of Legends currently as well, trying to learn that as much as I can. Uh, big first-person shooter player, lots of different games for that. Um, pretty much any game I'm pretty good at. <laughs> I try to be good at at least. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean... Um... I guess you kind of gave us a little bit about Glitch Bar, like how you got involved. Do you know the story of Glitch Bar? Like, obviously, you got started pretty early on, so you must know quite a bit about it. Um, can you give us at least what you know, like kind of the walkthrough of how it all came together? Because I know uh, Dwight and Chris started it as a partnership. Like, how did that all go? Uh, I think originally Dwight had the idea for it <clears throat> and wanted to do something and I uh, met with Chris and just kind of started working on collecting games and finding a location. Pretty basic stuff. Um, it's just kind of grown a lot from the original. Uh, a lot of games have, like, moved locations, a lot of remodeling, a lot of everything. Um, concept changes kind of, you know, where we're... We do game passes and things like that because all our games are on free play. That's kind of the basic concept of the, of the bar is uh, you come in and if you buy a cocktail from us or a beer, we'll give you free access to the arcade, which everything is on free play, <clears throat> including the indie, all the indie games. <clears throat> um, and uh, it works out very well. Most people come in, they, they want to drink and they want to play games and... It pretty much seems to go hand in hand. We are a full bar, 140, 120, 140 beers, 24 drafts, uh, full cocktail menu where we have a wide variety of different kind of cocktails with really cool names, really good flavors. We have a drink called The Bomb where we actually put a whole popsicle inside of a drink. It's pretty cool. Um, sell crazy amounts of those. Um, now we actually have a full kit, pretty much a kitchen where we serve different kinds of sandwiches and things like that. Constantly changing to whatever we want to make, kind of, you know, whatever we feel is going to work. We try things out. If it works, we keep it. If it doesn't, we change something different. <clears throat> it's a really cool place that just constantly is adjusting to things. Um, I'm on there all the time. I love it. Yeah, I mean, the bar is super fun, and you're right. There's so many different drinks. I, I don't even remember what I was drinking when I was out there, but you guys had so many options. I was, like, overwhelmed. I couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even pick one. I was just like, Chris, just pick something and grab that for me. Um, 
I guess you were there from the start of the bar pretty much, like you said. Um, I'm curious from the general manager posi position, how did you guys grow the bar? Like for people that are looking to get into that scene, what were some things that you did that kind of helped the bar grow over time that you would look back on and be like, this was a huge pivotal thing that we did? Um, Killer Queen's a given. Uh, if, if you develop that scene, you, you can have a, a more returning customer base. <clears throat> um, ooh, we have a, I don't know, I guess we, we kind of appeal to a casual gamer standpoint as well, where you can come in and just play. Um, but we we do cater a little bit to the competitive side of people. We have like, uh, for example, like a high scoreboard that shows all the local high scores of all the games that not all the games, all the games that you can get high scores on uh, with one quarter basically um, is on a board. A lot of um, we have a handful of music rhythm games that also we have a semi difficult system of tracking high scores so people can see what other people are doing at what level and try to beat them, even though they've never met them. Um, and it's cool because that actually creates friendships and then people want to keep coming back to challenge each other and teach each other these games. Um, and so that's like a really good thing because you're, you're getting that repeat business a lot. Um, and that's one way of growing. Um, we've, brought in a bar manager to help with, um, you know, the things that were not so knowledgeable with, uh, you know, he's come in and kind of re redone a lot of the menu and things like that, changed things, which brings in like a different type of clientele who are interested in different, better kind of cocktails instead of, you know, a more basic menu. Uh, growth, man. It's just you you grow steadily over time as well, just from taking care of your guests every single time. And they're, they're the ones that want to come back every time. Every weekend, we're having the same people, which is what you want, you know, in business, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like you guys just have so many different avenues. I mean, you've got the high scores to keep people competing one on one in games. Um, you got Killer Queen, which just creates a huge community aspect. And anybody that plays Killer Queen wants their friends to play too. You know, you want to hang out with your friends, grab a couple of drinks, play the game. And I mean, then you've got just like taking care of your customers. It's a, it's such a simple thing. Like people that enjoy a business are going to refer other people to come to it. So if you guys are taking care of your guests, then they're going to have a good time and they're going to bring friends next time. Um, you kind of touched on like how big KQ is with bringing people to the bar and building that community. Um, let's talk about some of the other indie games you guys have. So what other games do you have? Um, and how have you guys liked having all those different games? Uh, yeah, we have all, all the major ones currently available. Death Ball, Switch and Shoot, Cosmotron, Armed and Gelatinous, Galactic Battleground, Black Emperor. Um, those are, those are really good because, um, they're new. It's not something that you play, you've really played growing up or, or anything like that. So for a lot of people, it's their first time getting into something simple yet not simple at the same time. <clears throat> uh, Death Ball, for example, is something that I generally will push like two people. If like there's two people there for the first time or whatever, I'll push them towards that because it's a two-player game. You know, and I, and I explain how it works that it, you know, as one person learns, the next person can be learning as well if they're teaching each other. And then next thing you know, 45 minutes later, they're still playing the same game, um, which is cool to see because then, you know, they're super interested in it. Um, I, I brag a lot about that game as well because I tell everyone I'm the number one player in South Florida for Death Ball. Um, and I accept all challenges. Um Switch and shoot's a really cool, simple game. You, you, it's it's super easy to explain to someone. And you just walk away and let them get into it. Um, Black Emperor, kind of same thing. Explain how it works. People get into it and they sit there for forever. And then when you have somebody who's really good come in, uh, who 
knows how to play the game, you'll start seeing people crowd around it a little bit. Um, and we we try to teach people how to play these newer ones so that it draws more attention because if nobody understands how to play, they're not going to play it. They just walk past. Um, Armed and Gelatinous has the, the Discord for, uh, which is pretty cool. You can go back and see the high score or people's previous scores and things like that. Um, it, it's just Killer Queen's the, the one that draws the most attention out of them all because it has that it already has like um like an infrastructure uh, to it where there's a, there's a scene there's a a community that's playing and organizing and literally traveling to play against each other already um we just hosted um uh, a new tournament or we changed the name of the queen's gone wild tournament to um the hive city classic uh just for something a little bit different and um, we actually just hosted a tournament about a month ago, the first one since COVID. Uh, we had a 12-team tournament. It was really cool. We had people from, from everywhere come. A uh, team from Austin, Texas, I believe, took first place. So it, 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 people are super interested in all this stuff, man. It's just a, it's the more the better. I mean, I, I would love to see what else is coming out you know, through your channels and everything. Yeah, I know, I know there's more in the works. Um, I actually got reached out to just a couple of days ago about uh, one another one here in Minneapolis. So that's, I mean, that's exciting to see more growing here. And I'm sure there's going to be more games coming. I mean, people are going to keep making games and people are interested in that arcade scene. Uh, it's really good to hear that you guys are running tournaments again. And I'm really excited to have just found out that I got the last ever Queens Gone Wild t-shirt. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that was an awesome design. Um, I know you spoke the last time about running that tournament. Um, can you give us some ideas for people that are interested? I know that there's a lot of sticker shock with Killer Queen when you see the game, but there is a lot of returns that come from it, whether it be coins going into the machine or people just buying drinks and hanging out at your location. It's kind of like that for all the indie games. Can you give us like a couple tips for what makes a successful tournament? A big part that makes a successful uh, tournament is the community itself. Um, this last tournament was, we planned it super fast. Uh, I mean, it, it, it all came together like the last the last night before the tournament started. And uh, the shirts we got were community fundraised. Like we had people donate money just to buy shirts for the tournament. Um, so it, it's it's nice and easy when you have a whole bunch of people willing to put in their free time and, and not get paid and just do it for the love of the community or the game itself. Um, that really helps. Uh, like advice, I would say, like literally don't don't sleep on planning like time wise. Like if you <laughs> if you want to do it, give yourself plenty like three months planning to organize and get people to do things and because it, it, it ends up becoming a lot your first time your first second your first two times um and then obviously the more you do it the easier it becomes everything falls into place but it, it becomes a lot because you always want to do like we want to do more every single time we're like oh we did this last time let's do it bigger better this time let's do this let's do that um our last trophy was a was a custom art skateboard deck. Uh, Which was out. so sick. That was such <laughs> a cool deck. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this, this like past time, this past tournament, we had the exact same idea. We wanted to do a different type of um, view of Killer Queen, like a, like from a different perspective. Uh, and it just kind of like the trophy kind of just fell apart in the last minute. We just couldn't get it done. So we did prize money instead. Um, but like, same thing, like we're doing another tournament, most likely in February, we want to do a bigger one. Um, we want to do, I want to do a 2014 max tournament. I want to do a two day event. I want to stretch it out and have some fun instead of rushing through it all in one day. Uh, so like, like I'm going to have to start planning that soon, I imagine, cause that's going to be big. Um, 
yeah, it's like you, you just make sure you got to give yourself time and, and the community really helps because I have a lot of people down here that really take things by the reins and just does them and uh, it'd be impossible for me to do by myself, honestly, man. There's no way, honestly, from from a just from a time standpoint, it's a lot, um, but it's totally worth it because people come from all across the country and they they get super excited to be wherever they are, uh, drinking whatever they're drinking with the people that play the same game that they play halfway across the country. Um, and so it's a really cool thing to see uh, and bring to life and, and host. I mean, we, we give it a safe place to play, you know. Um, and people love coming here. They're always like, Glitch Bar is like my favorite place that has a Killer Queen machine. And we're always like, I want to know what. Yeah, I mean, the bar is sick. Like, the aesthetic is really, really cool. Um, and you guys have a really good balance. Like, you have a really good balance. I know you are talking about dance games. I don't remember you guys having any the last time I went, but it seems not, like you... Not dance, just, like, rhythm. Um, rhythm, like, okay. Yeah, like, um, we have, like, a Jew beat. Uh, there's one Which called, is like, so a, fun. I love that game. Yeah, uh, very simple 16-button whack-a-mole, essentially, is what right. it is. It lights up, you push it. Um, and then just more advanced ones that are more flashy and things like that, but all in Japanese, everything like that. Those are the best rhythm games by far. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you guys have like a really good mix of like the, the rhythm games and you've got like the, the Switch and a couple other consoles hooked up in the back and you've got indies, you've got classic games. Um, so it's a really nice balance of games in there. Um, hard question for you. Let's go five favorite games that you guys have in the bar. Indies included. Everything is fair game. Uh, um, we'll go order f favorite Killer Queen, second favorite. Oh, man, Death Ball. Hmm. Third favorite, Galaga. Fourth favorite. Wow, yeah, this is a rough one. It's a hard. It's it's hard to just pick five out of. I mean, you guys have like sixty plus games, don't you? Probably more than that, even. Uh, four, 40 plus right now. Um, because we have we have we have this really that really cool Darius burst from Japan too. That's a different story. Um, we have a really. I would say after those. Three, I would say Street Fighter Four. Uh, we have a really cool like PC version of it, um, LCD screen, really pretty. Um, and then I'd go with Galactic Battleground, man. I really enjoy that game when I can get people to play with me. It's a really good game. Yeah, it really does shine in multiplayer. I mean, I know the first time you played it was in at Bumble Bash um, when we had the four player, the tournament, and everything. Um, that's a such a solid lineup of games. I guess the next question that I would have for you is just thinking back to everywhere that you've gone with Glitch Bar, any like conventions or tournaments, anything like that. What were some things that you saw at those events that you really, really liked that you've started to incorporate into your own events? Hmm. Uh, trophy being an easy one. We always see trophies, and we always just wanted to have the best, the coolest one. <clears throat> That's how, kind of how we ended up with the skateboard deck. Uh, just kind of one up, try to show everything, show it up a little bit better. Um, yeah, I guess like when you go to places, you you steal ideas and little things here and there to. You're kind of like, oh, that's done really well. Let's take that idea. That's that looks really cool. Makes things easy. Let's take that idea. Um, I mean, we've done that with lanyards. Um, I think that's kind of where our, our wristband game pass comes from. From the bar itself, just makes things easy and convenient. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. That's that's a tough question, I guess, because you're you're uh, you're stumping me, you know. Like I'm throwing you some curveballs here. Yeah, you're, I mean, you 
you don't necessarily ever want to rip directly off of anybody. You kind of want to just build off what they did. I mean, like you said with trophies, I remember when I was at Bumble Bash 4, that Black Emperor trophy was sick. It was like a huge snail. Like, it it looked so cool, like just the shell. But, um, I mean, they, they had – or was that the Killer – that was the Killer Queen trophy, wasn't it? It was the snail. Yeah. Um, but they had, like, such cool things. And the lanyards, you're right, they were so convenient. You could just, like, show your lanyard and you just walk right in. Nobody ever really cared that much. Um, but I just – I felt like – they did that really well. And I know a lot of people were involved in running that, that convention. And that was a really, really well run tournament. Um, I guess the last question I have for you, um, is what are the future plans for glitch bar? Like, what do you guys, what do you specifically want to see come out of the bar? Like maybe new games or like an expansion, anything like that. Um, well, glitches, uh, currently working on a smaller type of bar, like a sister bar, I guess uh, you would call it, uh, called um, Satellite Pinball Lounge, uh, where we're basically trying to open up a pinball spot with close to a dozen pinball machines. Um, still in the works. Um, and then that frees up lots of things for us to do at the bar itself. Um different ideas, different concepts, new games, more space. Uh, so that's kind of really cool, exciting thing that's just kind of waiting to happen. Um, and then uh, I guess with the bar itself, like it, it's already crazy to see how much has changed since um, COVID started because uh, it's not over. We're still adjusting with it as well. Um, I just would like to see the continued growth that we have, like, um, people, more and more people are interested, like every week, it's more people that say that they've never been there before and it's their first time. Uh, and then you see them again a couple of days later, a week later. Uh, so that's, that's the, that's what you would want. Um, new people coming in and being interested and wanting to come back and then seeing a lot of the same people you see all the time. Um, mixing with these new people uh it's just constant growth um it's fun man there's i just want to keep getting like really cool interesting games in um things that you don't see too often um a lot of a lot of uh, indies, if we can get them. I, I, I know there's a lot of stuff coming out soon, you know. So it'd be really cool to see what's out there and what kind of space we can make. Because that place is it's super tiny in comparison to what you would want, I guess, to have like a whole bunch of space for a whole bunch of games. So we're kind of like limited. Um, if only I can get rid of the ski ball machines. It free up so much space for games. That would free up so much space. Yeah, but um, that's like our number one thing. We have two ski ball machines, and people love them. Um, it's just free play. It's just constant balls rolling down. There's never a second of silence from a ski ball machine. Yeah, I mean, I feel like ski ball just has nostalgic memories for everyone. I mean, you played everyone. it at some point as a kid, and... You always want to give it another go. I, I don't play them unless it's like the old skee-ball machines. The new ones, uh, I'm not about. Um, I don't remember if it's a hot ticket or something was the one that they always had at the Chuck E. Cheese near me. Um, but yeah, I, I think those are those are good things to want out of the future of the bar is just see the growth and see more people coming in. And it's it's got to be really exciting to to see someone and be like, oh, I've never been here, but I'm, I'm having a good time. And then they come back. Like they genuinely were having a really good time. And that's, that's what everybody strives for, really, in the industry. Um, I guess to wrap everything up, Joe, just give us the links to social media. Where can people find you? Where are you guys active? Things like that. And then uh, we'll say peace out. Uh, you can add me personally on uh, Instagram. I'm IGListJoe. Um, for a while, I didn't have an Instagram, so they used to tag me as IGListJoe. And so I just <laughs> kind of adopted the name. Um, please follow Glitch Bar on social media. Uh, Glitch Bar Fort Lauderdale, um, Instagram, Facebook, 
uh, see the daily posts that we do, the cool pictures, the cool games. We post pictures of our food, our drinks, our cocktails, um, general crowd stuff, you know. Um, we have a website, glitchbar.com. Uh, you can, there's a whole area at the bottom where you can book an event if you want, talk to us that way. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basically it right there. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thanks for coming on again, man. Um, it's always good to chat with you. And I'm just excited to see what happens with Glitch Bar in the future. There are indies coming. We'll talk, um, try and figure out what's coming next. But uh, just for anybody that's watching, I appreciate you checking out the show. Uh, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let your friends know. And until next time, peace.